In 1976, the federal government set up a research project in Minnesota to learn more about wolves. When they shut it down in 1990 and said all the wolves had to be euthanized, one of the employees stepped in and turned it into her life's work. That transformed the Wildlife Science Center into a nonprofit hub for research, conservation, and education. WCCO's Aaron Hassanzada traveled to Stacy, Minnesota to see what they've learned from a lifetime with wolves. These are western animals there. You can tell how much bigger they are. Peggy Callahan has spent decades watching wolves. They read us expertly. Watch her. They are the most astute observers of anything I've ever seen. 90% of what they communicate is body language only. Another day at the Wildlife Science Center means another field trip. And this is a wolf puppy. And another visit from a research crew. They're right out out that door. So do you guys have all, all the equipment? To understand safe handling, treatments, reproduction patterns, old. even less lethal ways to keep wolves away from livestock. Uh, what year are these wolves born? 2017. We're working with the University of Minnesota today, um, looking at just the big questions about what it's like for a wolf with a varied background <laughs> to be in a place like this. A place like this meaning life in captivity. Before you judge that, you should know this. If they weren't here, many would have been euthanized in the wild. Some are nuisance animals, some are endangered species. And so when they're in a habitat like this, we try to understand how do we best manage their welfare, minimize their stress, and improve the, the breeding productivity. And so this is a very unique mission here of rescue and science. So come this way. One that Megan doesn't take lightly. Is there a headlamp? They call her the wolf whisperer. I don't call myself that. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I feel like I kind of have a unique perspective on wolf behavior and, and being around wolves because I grew up with it. So, you know, I, I, I raised my first litter of wolf puppies when I was four years old. Let's get these guys in the holding area first. Yep. Today's uphill battle is getting into the enclosure with these wild wolves for their checkups, blood draws, and heart monitor data readings. And her heart rate when we approached was 231. We're fully aware that these are wolves, um, and that male would just kill for a nice chunk of me. Though, watch how this hand raised wolf pack reacts to Megan. I slow your roll, man. This pack was raised the same way. It's just that one alpha has decided to kick Peggy out of the pack. So, look at this guy. I bottle fed him from the time he was 10 days old. A dynamic shift that happens often with this highly hierarchical species. See him stalking me? What? Can a wolf live happily in a place like this? We believe absolutely yes. <laughs> and eats every three hours around the clock. I don't sleep a lot. Megan seems to understand these wolves better than a lot of us know ourselves. <laughs> the only life she's ever known. When I was 16, I really decided that I wanted to stay here and take the place over. It's a quest her mother's been on all these years. I wrote to the wolf biologist that ran the place when I was eight years old. So <laughs> this is definitely something more serious than just an interest for me. It was my passion. Her fire fueled by better understanding these captivating creatures. We learn right alongside with them. In Stacy, Erin Hassanzada, WCCO 4 News. There are more than 100 wolves living at the center, including threatened Mexican and red wolves. Some could eventually be released back into the wild.